and a quick look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from Citizens Business Bank Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the bantamweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Mike Beltra. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall. Official weight, 145.4 pounds. He represents Nubians MMA and CMMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mexico City, Damas y Caballeros, El Hijo de Distrito Federal, Ciudad de Mexico, introduciendo Victor the Blitz Rivera. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. Official weight, 146 pounds even. He represents Subfighter MMA and the United States Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, from Rock Island, Illinois, presenting Andrew, get some free love. Once again, your referee for this three-round bantamweight bout, Mike Beltran, now with the final instructions. All right, John, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Tusk goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. And here we go, round one. Our matchup between Victor Rivera in the blue tape gloves and Andrew Freelove in the red gloves. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds. This is the 145-pound weight division. Both fighters immediately meet in the center. Both fighters taking their time testing out the waters here. Constantly going back and forth. This is starting to turn into a stand-up battle. No one's quite kind of went for the elevation change quite yet. That's and it. here we go, as I say it. Freelove looking like he was uh, trying to get the toss there. Yeah, Freelove's just working him up against a cage. Beltran on top of the action, and Freelove just looking for that takedown. And there you have it. Nice takedown. Solid, clean. Effortless for free love. Free love looking to go to work here on the ground. Looking to posture up, a little bit of damage. Rivera doing a good job so far of deflecting any of that damage. Free love making good use of that height advantage and that reach advantage. Really effectively wrapping around Rivera. Free love doing good, keeping busy, throwing those shots in. Rivera trying to get out of this, trying to get into a better position, but Freelove is just on top of it. Both fighters continue to work against the cage here, and Freelove is just not giving Rivera a chance to stand up. Constantly applying uh, pressure, rightfully so. And Rivera's just looking to reverse things. A little bit of grapple action here, and uh, Freelove maintains position. Freelove possibly setting up a rear naked here. Things getting turned around, but Freelove is working to take the back. And now, yeah, like I said, taking the back. This is a very bad position. Rivera is a little bit exhausted. 
just from the struggle alone, but pushes him back to the half guard. Freelove not looking to stay there very long, though, as he's trying to continue to pass here. Yeah, Freelove doing a great job keeping the pressure, staying tight, not really giving Rivera much you know, space to move. Rivera just looking for any way out of this, trying to get into a better position. And that is it. The round is coming to an end here. Freelove looking to score some last minute points. Coming to a close. And that's it. Freelove definitely scoring some points there for control of that whole round, was really able to just dominate where it was going. Not really a lot of damage being exchanged between these two, but just control alone and that takedown right there is definitely going to get Freelove a lot of points. Right here, he just takes the back and just continues to keep Rivera guessing. Rivera tries to spin around, but only makes things worse as Freelove continues to maintain that position, man. This very dominant fight displayed by Freelove. They head off into the next round, a very dominant fight displayed by uh, Freelove in the red tape gloves. And Rivera in the blue tape gloves. Rivera looking to change things, change the outcome here, Brown. It's almost like reminiscent of uh, round one. He comes out with that kick, trying to set up that takedown once again, and Rivera really needs to be cautious of that. Yeah, Rivera definitely looking like he's still putting on that aggressive role, but he's going to have to be careful. Hopefully, he's adapted or learned something from that first round and how to counter Freelove. And right now, Rivera just kind of circling around as Freelove takes the center cage. He's got to watch that kick, though, because Freelove sets that thing up, that left kick, and uh, kind of sets him up for that takedown. Freelove trying to move in for some combos here. They close the distance once again, and Freelove looking to take that down once again. So far, this fight has gone into his favor. Uh, it's going where he wants it to go. He's pretty much controlling the pace of the fight as soon as it starts to clinch up. But look at Rivera reverses things. Very impressive. And, uh, you know, Freelove says, nah, it's my turn. Right back to it, possibly just taking a little bit of a breather there. And a nice trip from Freelove. And now he's just going to do his thing from the ground. I think it's going to be very similar to the first round. Working to use that fence against his, to his advantage, uh, working that elevation. Freelove, again, doing a great job of staying busy, making sure the ref's not going to break things up. He wants to keep it here on the ground. Rivera struggling, trying to get out of this control. Freelove just kind of in an ideal spot right now, taking, latching onto the back of Rivera. But Rivera doing a decent job of spinning out and defending, not letting Freelove, you know, trap him up too bad. Rivera throwing some shots now, staying busy. And, you know, it's from, from the ground. If he, if he doesn't look like he's going to be standing up anytime soon, it's ideal. You know, he probably at least gets some kind of points trying to throw these little pot shots. They may not be doing too much damage, but, you know, they're staying, they're being consistent, they're staying busy. Might score him a few points. Yeah, both fighters just continue to just push it, but, you know, Rivera's just having a hard time. But right here, he almost grabs an ankle there, and that's where Freelove needs to be a little bit careful. But right now, it looks like he's doing a good job of maintaining position, maintaining that control. And he keeps uh, Rivera guessing. Final seconds remain here. Freelove just staying busy. Rightfully so. Yeah, a little bit of deja vu there from uh, the first round. It kind of almost went identically similar to that first round. Uh, we saw right here Freelove was able to get that trip, and as soon as it got taken down to the ground, it was his game. He was right back into that control zone, just as we saw in the first round, locking down Rivera, not really giving him any space or any, any means to move. Not to discredit Rivera, he was defending very well, was able to spin out of a lot of uh, Freelove's moves, but just wasn't quite you know, able to do enough significant you know, moves in this round.
Right here, you just see Freelove just maintaining that control and just constantly doing what he has to do uh, to win this fight, because it, it seems it's like it's going to go the distance here. Here we go, round three. And uh, so far, it's been Freelove's fight. Vera knows that he is down two rounds. This is the uh, this is go for broke at this point. You know, either go for the knockout, you know, submission, whatever it takes. But that's easier said than done because Free Love seems to uh, be the one in control when it goes to the ground. Yeah, definitely. Rivera's going to have to look for something a little more aggressive, something on the stand up. He's going to get dominated if it gets taken back to the ground. So you know, he's going to want to avoid the cage. Ooh, gets oh, just like that. Freelove going to exploit that little slip there. Any slight bit of off balance, and it's just right there, back to the ground. Rivera now on the ground, not in a good situation here. If it goes any way the way we've seen the last two rounds, it's definitely not going to work out for him. Freelove working the same similar position we've seen. Now Free Love working to try to take the back here. Rivera just trying to defend. Free Love really getting wrapped up around Rivera, locking his head up. Rivera looking very vulnerable right now. Rivera tries to spin out there. And right now, he's just continuing to work from that half guard, trying to pull through. Freelove, uh, you know, he could sit here. This is like chill for him. I mean, if he stayed here, he would win the fight. This is proven to be a little more frustrating for Rivera at this point. And uh, you see Freelove just scoring all kinds of points. Yeah, it's really just the sprinkles on top, throwing those little shots here and there, keeping things busy, keep doing some light damage to Rivera. Rivera, you know, he's doing a good job trying to slip out of these holds. You know, he's, he's getting out, he's spinning out the right way, but free love is just there at every angle, you know, to counter him. Yeah, there's just it seems like there's no way out of this. Even if he did have a map, uh, there's all kinds of obstacles in getting out of this one. Oh, possible crucifix right here. And Freelove trying to set it up. Posture's up, now trying to go for the arm bar. You know, the, just the speed and transitioning of Freelove, you know, that's really giving him the advantage here. He's just one step ahead of Rivera. But Rivera, as I'm saying that, flips things around. I think the only thing that separated him was the ground game. And if Rivera worked a little bit more on his ground game, not saying that it's not good at all, it's very good. But it just seems as though free love's very tough when it comes to the ground game. So, if you know, I'd love to see Rivera back, work a little bit on the ground game. I guarantee that's a force to be reckoned with right there. Look at this. Right here, free love just flipping him around. Yeah, Freela was really able to just dominate that whole scenario. I think it was really helpful to have that reach advantage there. He was able to just really wrap himself around Rivera and not let him move. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of bantamweight action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judges Mark Davidson and Jackie Denkin both scored this bout 30 to 27, while Ron McCarthy has it 30 26. For your winner by unanimous decision, Andrew, get some free love. Here is Tyler Benaki. Tyler Benaki now making his way to the cage. Benaki hails from Beaumont, California and stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. Fighting out of the 151 pound weight class, his current amateur MMA record stands at four wins and zero losses. Benneke currently holds a white belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains out of Riverside MMA. 
Beneke also trains out of Joel Diaz Boxing Academy where he practices his stand-up game. Tyler Beneke now makes his way into the cage. Here is Asa Caraway. Asa Caraway now making his way to the cage. Caraway hails from Moreno Valley, California and stands at five feet, seven inches tall. Fighting out of the 150 pound weight class, his current amateur MMA record stands at six wins and two losses. Caraway trains out of Apex MMA. You know, we've seen Asa Caraway fight here plenty of times in King of the Cage. He's always an explosive fighter, always brings 150% to the cage every fight. It's never a boring fight with Caraway here. He's got a great stand up game, he's got a great ground game, very well rounded fire, fighter. Very fast, very agile. Now both these fighters, uh, both Caraway and his opponent Beneke, they have good standing records right now. Both of them are looking, up, looking to pick up an extra win tonight. It's definitely going to be a brawl. I can predict a lot of stand-up going on. We may see a knockout, who knows. Asa Caraway makes his way inside the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Citizens Business Bank Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout for the King of the Cage Amateur Junior Lightweight World Championship. The three judges scoring this bout will be Mark Davidson, Jackie Denkin, and Ron McCarthy. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, her D. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, official weight 150.6 pounds. He represents Riverside MMA and the Joel Diaz Boxing Academy. Record, four victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Beaumont, California, presenting Tyler Benaki. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet seven inches tall. Official weight, 154 pounds. He represents Apex MMA. Record, six victories, two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Moreno Valley, California, presenting Asa Caraway. Once again, Herb Dean is your referee. Three rounds of championship action, junior lightweights. All right, gentlemen, we've been with the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. Touch gloves and let's do this. And here we go, round one. Our matchup between Tyler Benneke out of the blue corner and also Caraway in the red gloves. Caraway with some nice hands there. Oh, spinning back kick by Benneke. Yeah, there's a lot on the line for this fight. Uh, it is the uh, King of the Cage Amateur Junior Lightweight Championship. 
And Beneke continues to circle around here. Both fighters displaying some heavy hands. This will be a very quick fight, too. Okay, these guys are just slugging it out. Beneke with the kicks. And you know, it's not just for show. He's definitely putting a lot of power behind those. Very accurate. Caraway with some combinations. Showing he's got some quick lefts there. Beneke just continues to you know, stalk him and push forward. You know, both these fighters, they're two very aggressive fighters. They're usually very explosive right off the bat. And they're just, these forces are just colliding here. And it really isn't, you know, no one's showing a clear advantage yet. Both fighters are just balanced out, trading some shots. Both fighters continue to be content here on the feet. Pushing forward is Caraway. Some combos. Caraway looking like the a little more of the aggressor here. Beneke waiting for that counterattack. Oh, nice shot by Caraway. Big right. Stuns Beneke just a little bit. Big overhand right misses there by Caraway as well. Beneke moves in. He's got Caraway up against the fence here. Wonder if we'll see a change in elevation, possibly. Caraway walks it right around, puts Beneke up against the fence. And they'll break away. Nice right from Caraway there. Beneke returns, but Caraway just keeps it going. It's another spinning back kick from Beneke. Both fighters just continue to keep it on the feet. We just finished up that first round between Tyler Beneke and Asa Caraway, and boy, what did it just break off to an explosive beginning. Uh, Caraway and Beneke just exchanging a, a lot of shots back and forth. Both fighters starting a little more cautious this round. Caraway just uh, constantly pushing forward as well. Both fighters just, I mean, this is one of those fights that can end any moment, but they've got the uh, capacity to take it the distance. But right here, you could see that Beneke's like, you know what, I've got to possibly take this to the distance. Let's slow it down a bit, take it to the ground, change it up. Yeah, Asa Caraway definitely can hold himself well on the ground, but he is, you know, primarily a stand-up fighter. He's definitely got that knockout capability, so I think it's smart on Beneke's move. Oh, Beneke. Possibly cranking the arm there. Caraway quickly turned things around. Beneke now up against the fence trying to hold on here. Caraway trying to keep that pressure going, but Beneke has a possible guillotine now. Still pushing for that takedown is Caraway. And uh, Beneke's having nothing of it. Herb Dean on top of the action, making sure both fighters are staying busy. Oh, and it looks like a tap. It looks like Caraway tapped there from the guillotine. Beneke was just locking it. It was getting pretty tight. I wasn't sure if Caraway was going to be able to hold on much longer, but it looks like we got a tap out of it.
ladies and gentlemen, the official time, one minute and 45 seconds of round number two. Your winner by tap out via Ninja Choke, a new King of the Cage amateur junior lightweight world champion, Tyler Benaki. Casey Wildstyle Johnson. And there he is, Casey Johnson making his way to the cage here tonight. A big battle ahead of him tonight as he takes on the likes of Jose Medina. Casey Johnson, 29 years of age, stands at five foot seven inches. And he's got a nice reach advantage of 69 inches. And uh, tonight, He's gonna have to utilize that advantage over his opponent, Jose Medina. And a little bit of height advantage obviously goes to Jose Medina, 5'8". And of course, these two are fighting in the 135 pound weight class. Should be a quick lightning fight here between these two. Casey Johnson supports, uh, sports a record of seven and four in his pro MMA career. And of course, in his amateur career, he has over 20 fights to his name. So uh, incredible, uh, you know, experience uh, as he goes in the cage. And uh, of course, uh, you know, Jose Medina has a really nice amateur MMA record as well. He's got over 16 fights. It's, it's a pretty evened out matchup between these two. So it's pretty exciting to see how this is all going to pan out between these two. And we're just about set with the final preparations to get this matchup underway in the 135 pound weight division. Here is Jose Medina. Jose Medina out of Bloomington, California, making his way to the cage here tonight with a height of 5'8". 28 years of age. And of course, fighting in the 135 pound weight class here at Citizens Business Bank Arena. Look at the crowd here tonight. They are showing up for some mixed martial arts action. We want to thank the Citizens Business Bank Arena for inviting us back. And uh, you know, the more we come back, the, the word gets out and fans are continuing to show up. So thank you very much uh, to the fans as well, first and foremost. Now, Jose Medina sports a, you can see the purple belt there in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, of course. And, uh, you know, he fights out of adrenaline out in San Bernardino, California. Some of the pluses this guy has going for him is he has his wrestling ability, which will be great, you know, with the uh, takedown attempts of uh, Casey Johnson as he makes the move to the cage. This fight is just about underway as we make the final preparations for Jose Medina. Ladies and gentlemen from Citizens Business Bank Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Herdy. Introducing first, the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet seven inches tall. Official weight, 136 pounds. He represents Freak. Jitsu, record seven victories, four defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from Middleton, Indiana, presenting Casey Wildstyle Johnson. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire. Red corner stands at five feet eight inches tall. Official weight 135.8. Eight pounds. He represents Adrenaline MMA. Record, two victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen from Bloomington, California, presenting Jose Medina. Once again, your referee in charge of this three-round flyway bout, Herb Dean with the final instructions. All right, gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. 
follow my instructions. We're gonna keep it clean, touch gloves, and let's do it. Johnson in the blue, Medina in the red. Both fighters down to business. Ooh, coming off strong. Medina goes in for that takedown, and it looks like he might get it. Johnson doing a good job of defending, but can't hold on. Johnson doing a great job, but still got to get out of this because Medina's starting to swarm him. And he's smothering him, I should say. And Medina being the jiu-jitsu fighter that he is, he's getting right into his element right off the bat, not wasting any time. Johnson looking a little overwhelmed. Medina doing a good job keeping things busy here. Johnson holding the half guard right here. But Medina just trying to break through. And both fighters just continuing to work uh, from the back here as Medina continues to work from the top. Trying to pass the guard, but somewhat difficult in this position. And uh, hasn't passed him completely here. Medina landing some nice strikes right here. Johnson tries to tighten back up. Medina doing a great job. This is exactly where he wants to be right now. He's doing a great job of uh, separating his shots and keeping busy, making sure that the referee doesn't split this up or stand it back up. Medina staying busy, but you know, regardless of if any shots are breaking through or not, he is still maintaining control of the fight. It will score points in the minds of the judges if this does go the distance. So right now, Medina is just staying busy and doing what he's got to do. And uh, in the, you know, while he's doing this, he's he's definitely making Johnson tired. Medina just continually presses forward. Oh, Johnson gets a chance to break out, but Medina is so quick. Both fighters putting it on the line, and Johnson not making it easy. But Medina is on the verge of probably breaking through this guard and landing some nasty, nasty punches. Because uh, Johnson's starting to get a little bit tired, rightfully so. Uh, but trapping those arms, he's doing a good job thus far. But once he breaks free, those arms are going to kind of feel like jello. Yeah, Medina uh, you know, holding it down, you know? Definitely. I mean, Medina has just been persistent this entire time, just not giving Johnson a break. Medina still pushing forward. Johnson just trying to create some space between these two. More shots from the top. And Medina's just staying busy. We're here at the Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario, California for another night of mixed martial arts action to another full house. Uh, man, there was a lot of people here tonight. With each show that we've had here, the, the crowds continue to grow. And we are just excited and thankful uh, that they continue to invite us back every year. Uh, it's just been incredible, an incredible sight indeed. And right now, Johnson's starting to switch things up. Medina in trouble. How disheartening could that be if he did pull that off? Wow, that was crazy. He could have ended it right there. It was very, very close. I always say that's like putting in overtime and not getting paid, you know, if you were about to lose because, man, that is a tough loss. It could have been, but uh, Medina's hanging in there. Johnson finally getting some time to turn, turn this fight around in his favor. Medina still continually pressing forward, though. Go, 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 go
Johnson tries to take the back. Medina not letting it happen. Ooh, a knee to the head of Medina. And the, end, the round is coming to an end here. And it is just going 150% all the way to the end. Medina is just fighting oh, for it. Oh, man. Things just continue to change in this fight. What a battle. Walk us through the replay here. Both of, the guy, both of these guys just coming off, you know, the strongest they, the strongest ever right off the bat, not letting any, anything go to waste, any time go to waste. Medina immediately going in to, for the takedown, trying to control Johnson, and was able to control Johnson for the majority of the fight. But right at the end there, Johnson surprisingly got to turn things around for a second. And right here, man, Medina was staying busy, but like you said, Johnson turned things around. Uh, it was probably at the, uh, you know, at the two-thirds of the round mark. Something we need to look into there. So right here, things are going to change up. Oh, Medina with a hard right to start things off. Rocks Johnson a little bit there. Herb Dean, our rep for this matchup, once again here at Citizens Business Bank Arena, Ontario, California. And Medina's going right back to where he started, and this worked for him. Uh, but Johnson was able to turn the tables there for a bit. And things changed uh, towards the end. So Medina knows he's got to maintain that balance, keep it going, tire him down, wear him out a bit. And Johnson's just left guessing here. Medina taking a similar approach here as he did in the first round. A little more aggressive, though, I must say, off the bat. Johnson looking a little fatigued. Medina just staying busy. I mean, if Medina even stayed like this, he could possibly win the fight. Now, this isn't like, you know, the most preferable way to win a fight, but strategically, it would work. But Johnson just seems to be able to get a spurt of energy and get out sometimes, so that's the only factor here. And of course, the crowd starts, you know, booing and stuff, but they don't understand, you know, it's easier said than done. Uh, so Medina is just, you know, he's in cruise mode right now, and it's Johnson's move. And Johnson has the control to change the fate, but Medina is just there to man to make sure fate don't happen on his head. Yeah, Medina definitely there to just lock down any opportunity created by Johnson. Johnson tries to slip out there, but Medina is just right on top of it. Medina doing a good job staying busy. Johnson just trying to figure out his next move here. Taking some heavy shots from Medina. And Medina just continues to work from the top. And from the full guard, he constantly lands shots. Scored some more points. This round is almost coming to a conclusion as well. And this is the turning point uh, for Johnson, man. He really needs to, uh, you know, if this goes the distance, he really needs to go uh, full throttle in the final round. Hold it on. Medina breaks out. Nice little scramble. Johnson, a questionable situation here. And there we go, Medina makes the first move, tries to take the back, doesn't quite get it. Johnson creates that distance. Oh, Johnson, he's, he can't get up. Oh, that's it. Oh no, something wrong with his knee there. He cannot, he's oh, having man. an issue standing. Must have had to call it right there. Let's take a look at this. It didn't look like there was any real oh. serious one shot to yeah. the knee. I think it was just wear and tear from the last couple of rounds. And right there, right there. There was some. He, he got up wrong on it. He knew right away. Yeah, Herb Dean calls it. Great job by Herb Dean. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout. The blue corner is no longer able to continue this evening due to injury. Your winner by TKO 243 of round two, Jose Medina. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Citizens Business Bank Arena, Ontario, California, King of the Cage and General Tire present our featured bout of the evening live on Facebook. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, John Carbelli Chair, Executive Officer, 
Andy Foster, Supervisor. Sean Wells is in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder, Terry Trevilcock Jr. Matchmaker Carlos Rivera, Promoter Mike Lowe. The three judges scoring this match will be Mark Davidson, Jackie Denkin, and Ron McCarthy. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from East LA, Mike Beltra. And now, for all the fight fans in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Southern California, let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Five rounds of MMA for the King of the Cage Women's Strawweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet, two inches tall. Official weight, 114.6 pounds. This Muay Thai America and Nubians MMA fighter has a professional record, two victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Los Angeles, California, presenting the challenger, Love It, Team Bullet Young. Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, four inches tall. Official weight and even 116 pounds. This USAK and Luttrell Yi fighter is also undefeated in her professional campaign. Four bouts, four victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from El Paso, Texas, presenting the reigning and defending King of the Cage, women's strawweight champion of the world, Cynthia Sin Arcel. Once again, Mike Beltran is your official five round schedule. All right, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch cuffs now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business, ladies. Let's go. And here we go. Mike Beltran, our rep for this matchup. Here we go, Beltran. Man with the best beard in the business. Get things started. This is the fight everybody has been anticipating all night. This is the reason why it's packed here tonight. They wanted to see the uh, top females here at King of the Cage uh, in this weight division. Arceo taking on uh, Young. Young has got heavy hands, accurate hands. And uh, this is going to be a, a different fight for Arceo because a lot of the fights that Arceo has taken on uh, have been uh, heavy in jiu-jitsu, still a little bit of the hands, but this is where Arceo likes to be. And so this is a great challenge for her. Yeah, Young, definitely a formidable fighter on the standout. Probably the strongest opponent Arceo has fought to date here. You know, she's an upstanding boxer. That's where she trains most of her style in. And man, she's actually, I think she's able to match the speed and the power of Arceo. Something Arceo hasn't gone up, quite up against in her past. Both fighters well engaged here. And when it comes to the stand-up game, this is what they do. This is what they're best at. And uh, we know Arceo's been working on her ground game as well, but she definitely has that uh, karate background. Um, and that's why you're seeing these kicks. And these are the type of kicks that you can't train for. You know, I, I, you know, a lot of people talk about karate isn't, isn't one of the greatest martial arts at work in MMA, but that's ridiculous. That is, that is a terrible statement to make in this day and age, the way that MMA has evolved. And these types of the kicks are the kicks that you don't really train for because everybody's doing the Muay Thai, and, and so these are different angles. And sometimes that unorthodox uh, skills uh, pose a threat to your opponent. And Young, so far, it hasn't uh, been a threat so far. She's just waiting right there. Those are those shots we're talking about. Yeah, Young definitely has a lot of endurance. She can take quite a few hits without it really phasing her. So she's able to push forward and really take a few combos from Arceo, which, you know, most of the fighters she's fought in the past we've seen haven't taken it as smoothly. 
Both fighters staying loud on their feet very quick. Young comes in with a couple shots. Cynthia backs up a bit. Now they're throwing heavy leather here. Young trying to close in. Both fighters testing each other's chins out. So far, both have passed. Now Young, I know that she's uh, got a pretty good ground game as well, but I think this is a good test for her. She loves being on her feet, especially when it's gonna be against someone like Cynthia Arceo, who's also known for her stand-up. This is sort of like a bragging rights as well, not only the title. Yeah, it's great. It's really a test between two different techniques, you know. Of course, Arceo, as you were saying before, she's got that Taekwondo, that karate background. Whereas Young, she's more of a traditional boxer. Yes. And she does have a boxing background. I'm sure she's had several titles. I'm not, I, you know, I think I've read that somewhere. Quote me if I'm wrong. But she's, I don't think she's lost a fight in her professional boxing career as well. So um, that says a lot about her. And, you know, this isn't her first rodeo. Uh, she's used to the audience. She's been in MMA. She's been training mixed martial arts. And she's just been putting the whole game together. And this makes her such a dangerous fighter. Now, things are going to be changed up. Cynthia Arceo may take this to ground. I mean, it, it could totally throw Young's game off and be like, wait, wait, wait I wasn't expecting that. But we just won't know uh, what the game plan is here. You wouldn't believe how many people are in this audience right now and how quiet it is. It's incredible. It's almost like uh, the days of pride in Japan, the reverence uh, for the action inside. Both these fighters just clashing with such power. You know, it's a real nice back and forth. There really is no clear advantage here between, uh, to either of these fighters. kicks from Arceo. Both fighters just content on standing up and continuing to push the action forward. Coming to a close here on the next round. Both fighters have been utilizing a lot of energy. Now you can see Young is really starting to wind those shots up. They're starting to land. We'll take a quick look at the replay of that last round right there. Arceo coming out confident, but Young able to match her in the stand-up. It's going to be very interesting how this uh, second round comes. Stand-up war, it's kind of been a chess match on top. You know, no one would really overcommit because the second you overcommit, you catch one on the chin, especially with these kind of matchups. Mike Beltran, our rep for this matchup. Yeah, both these fighters just coming out with such explosive hands, explosive punches. They and really can't take any chances. Believe it or not, Beltran actually uh, belongs to a beard club. He actually went to a beard contest. I believe it was in uh, Reno uh, not too long ago, a couple years ago. Still does it on a yearly basis, but uh, he's been busy. But uh, the best beard in the business. There he is, Mike Beltran, uh, heading out this fight. So here you go. Young just continues to push forward. And, and you know, when she does put those shots together, they are dangerous. They're quick, they're fast. And you know, something I've always noticed about Arceo is that when she sets out to throw a combo, she doesn't stop halfway. It's yeah. always a complete combo, whether or not you know it misses or all the shots land, it's always you know a constant process. Goes all the way through and just bulldozes through whatever defense her opponent is. But Young just has this iron defense about her, you know, just thick skin. She's able to just take those hits or punch right through them back. Ooh, oh, a nice chest kick from Arceo. And those are the kicks we're talking about. You, you have somebody like Young who is so tough, so well-rounded. These kicks are the kicks you can't train for. They're just, uh, you know, unorthodox stuff. And it works. You know, it's direct. It's a lot of force right to the ribs, the stomach area. Definitely does not feel good. Well, Young's not taking it. I mean, she's moving forward. She's like, all right, now, now, we're, now business has started. Yeah, things are getting serious. Yeah, now. they're getting very serious. Both fighters not showing any sign of slowing down. 
Young still closing in though, putting some aggression on. Arceo. Both fighters closing in on each other. Young being a little more cautious now. Ooh, catches the kick from Arceo, but takes a knee. Absolutely, and it just it's it's back and forth right now. And uh, like I said, you know you don't want to overcommit in a fight like this because every shot that they use is precise. It's not like they they throw a shot and they miss it. It's all precision, accuracy, and uh, I, I would hate to be the guy that has to write the stats on this fight on the accuracy of this. Definitely. I mean, there's punches getting thrown every second, practically, and they're all accurate. Marcelo with a nice kick and punch combo. Both fighters just continue to circle around here. And uh, these, these fighters have cardio for days. I mean, they could go the full distance, no problem. And you know, the way they're swinging, the way they're taking shots, it just shows how well-rounded these athletes are because no one's got knocked out yet throwing those kind of hands. And the accuracy, look at that, taking one to the, the, the dome and, and just shakes it right off. Yeah, both of these, they proved their iron chins already. I mean, just taking hit after hit. You know, there's no light taps. In yeah. this. They're not doing any test shots. These are full on trying to knock each other out hits. Martial arts has been a part of Cynthia Arceo's life uh, throughout her childhood. And now this is the dream. This is what she's wanted to do. And, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for someone like her. But, you know, when you put someone like, you know, young in there, this, this possesses, uh, you know, a career change if things go wrong. And if she ends up taking this fight, this could really veer uh, Cynthia Arceo off a bit to where she'll have to regain uh, you know, the title once again. So this is a very tough matchup. Yeah, definitely and the most formidable opponent thus yeah. far for Arceo. We've seen Young fight before, and man, what she did to her opponents uh, is just absolutely incredible. And uh, tonight, it's Arceo's just like, she's like, I'm not gonna be that next victim. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm here, and Young knows it too. Well, Young she knows she's deserved that shot. Right, it's two just persistent, unbreakable stand-up games really just getting met head-to-head. -head. Both fighters getting pushed to their limits. That will conclude round number two. Just when we thought it couldn't get more active, I mean, the notches were just turned up on this round, especially those kicks from Arceo were just landing much more consistently this round. She was getting a lot more contact, but and to no discredit to Young, she was able to keep up with it no problem and throw in a yeah. few licks of her own. Absolutely. Beltran working a little overtime here tonight. We head off into the third round. And the way the hands have been flying, the way the hands have been slanging out there, I am surprised it's gotten this far. Uh, it just shows the uh, caliber of fighters and the skills that these uh, fighters possess. Back and forth. This is going to be a hard fight to call if it does go the distance and if it continues this way. It's not like these are like fill out punches. These are like straight up, I'm going to execute this situation and make it land. Accurately. Marceo making good use of those kicks. Both fighters still looking not very fatigued at all or no. shook. Marceo looking to close in. Both fighters competing for center cage here. 
And Young just continuing to utilize those boxing skills. And, uh, you know, this is the type of fight that Cynthia has always asked for, though. She always wants a fighter that's pretty much focused on the stand-up, but has a ground game, obviously. But this is their bread and butter, and this is what they choose to do. And uh, that's what I love about it. It's like, who's going to be the better fighter when it comes to the stand-up discipline? Right, and they both made it very clear, you know, there have been zero attempts, zero takedown attempts since this fight started. They're, they are not trying to get this on the ground. They're both obviously very comfortable with where they want to be right now. Arceo making good use of her mobility, circling the cage. Young staying very focused, waiting for that opportunity to open up. Nice shots. Young continues to push forward. Marcelo continues to take the outside portion of the cage and almost looked like she was gonna go for a takedown. But uh, Young seems to seems that she has a very good base when it comes to the takedown. I've seen her takedown defenses, and it's very difficult. This is one of the things that you'll probably work on when you're a boxer. You, you kind of work towards that because you've got to transition to the MMA thing. And sometimes you just don't have enough time to train on the ground game. So you just got to work that and have a little bit of the basics. But, you know, in this game, it continues to evolve. But uh, I can tell she's worked on the takedown defense. Both fighters continuing to press forward. Neither giving up a single inch. And when these fighters collide, it's like just two brick walls slamming into each other. You know, it's there's no follow through. It's not like you know someone pulling back or getting knocked back too hard. They're just it's impact met with impact. Young trying to close in here. Arceo getting up off the cage. Returning with some of her own shots, a nice kick. Continues to push forward and both fighters just content. Standing up uh, earlier, you know, you saw Cynthia Arceo try to take it to the ground. Uh, you know, Young was right there uh, with the takedown defense. And here they are, back on, just on the feet. You got to know that even though they're just standing up here, you know, the bouncing around and the adrenaline, I mean, it just can take its toll even. Oh, a nice kick from Arceo, but caught by Young. Things are heating up a little bit here. Coming to the end of this round here. And that will finish off that round. And it's not over yet. It very much looks like both these fighters have still very mu a lot of fight in them. It's nowhere near to and no, no one is really showing any clear victory over the other. And welcome back to Citizens Business Bank Arena, Ontario, California, as we head off into round four. So far, Young and Arceo just putting on an explosive performance here tonight. Strawweight Championship is on the line. This is scheduled for five five-minute rounds. Here we are in round number four. Cynthia Arceo in the red tape gloves and Lovett Young in the blue tape gloves. So far, it's been back and forth. It's been a pretty even fight. I think these next two rounds can determine uh, the winner. Oh, ooh, that's not good. It yeah, looks like we got an uh, eye poke here. And that happens. You know, it's very, very, very common, you know, sometimes, you know, even if 
the fist is only partially closed. It could just be a little piece of clipping, part of the glove. Yeah, that wasn't a punch. That was a, you could see by the reaction, unless she's a really good actor, which I doubt, that was not a punch. That was, uh, you could tell, I think part of the glove or the, uh, yeah, that's bad. Oh yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, they might have to call uh, the doctor in here to come take a look at that. And those uh, and that eye will turn so red, like blood red, if that uh, continues to s swell up and get bad. Because that's that's pretty bad poke. You could already tell. I mean, you could you saw the force behind behind all these punches that are yeah. being thrown tonight. So. Yeah, there was no force behind. That was more of like. And that's nothing on Young's part. It's not like she intentionally did that. I mean, it just happens. Usually just because, you know, it's usually as a result of checking. It's a freak accident. Checking, right? It happens. It, it does happen. But when it does, it's, it can cause a lot of damage. And we've seen guys like Randy Couture who, uh, you know, got this and with Chuck Liddell and him. I think it was Chuck Liddell, Couture, uh, number two. And that's what stopped the fight. It's like, uh, I don't even think it was the finger. It was the glove that did like a razor blade cut. Right, oh, they're going to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no sense in pushing this forward if someone's gonna go blind, you know. And here we go. Looks like uh, we're gonna throw it to the cage. This fight has been canceled. I, I, I wonder what's gonna happen or what the outcome is. We throw it to Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Mike Beltran, acting on the advice of the cage side physician, has stopped this contest. The red corner no longer able to continue due to an accidental shot to the head ladies and gentlemen we go to the judges scorecards judge mark davidson scores this bout 39 to 38 in favor of our ron mccarthy 39 38 for young and Jackie Denkin, 38 to 38. This is a technical decision split draw.